Doing only key quests is very difficult. You want to get good gear, but you can only do quests one time, so you hope to have enough parts to make even one armor piece. This challenge forces you to think outside the box and make progress in ways you normally wouldn't think of. I will attempt to do this in 4 Ultimates G rank and see if RNG will be with me, yes, or against me. I didn't get it? So at the start of G rank, I was out of important items like Mega Potions, and since the key quests ahead were fewer in number, I had to use the same strategy I did in low rank, gathering items before hunting the target. I did this before hunting Desert Celtus, and when I fought it, I was doing fine until I was hit pretty hard. But I was not ready for what happened next. Uh oh, the Rage Aang's here. Oh no, no, no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh! I don't have dung bombs. I'm not here for you, you big monkey. No, no, no. After that, I abandoned out of frustration, not realizing the new rule I added. Oh, I just realized. I just used one of my abandons. Oh, I'm an idiot. <sighs> So now I had four abandons left. As I went after Desert Celtus again, I would soon regret having the new rule. Um, mm, I can't abandon again. While I did make a comeback, I struggled, and the Rajang appeared again, and then this happened. Oh, no, no. Uh. Oh, no. Despite fainting again, I took down the insect without further issue. I go and check to see if the waste can be crafted, but I didn't have anything for it, which was unfortunate because I needed them. But there was a G-Rank Charge Blade I saw, and it required Cephalos Hard Fangs, which conveniently enough dropped from the double Cephadrome quest. So I went in the quest and forgot my cold drinks. So I abandoned, completely forgetting the new rule again. Okay, so I forgot about this part, and because of that, I didn't add it to the abandon counter, so let's just make it six abandons to make up for my mistake, okay? After gathering a bit, I take on the sand fish, but due to my frail armor, I was beat down pretty bad. I managed to capture one, but the second fish was too much for me, and soon, I failed. I would keep what the felines gathered, but if I failed the quest, I had to revert back to the previous save, which meant I got nothing. And to make things worse, I only saved right after beating Desert Celtus. So I had to sort through my items again. It was clear that I couldn't handle the two Cephadrums yet, so I went for Hermitar instead. But, uh, here's how that went. Ooh. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm good. I just need to capture him now. Now, I just want to mention here that I paused the recording when going to capture Hermitar, but I forgot to unpause it, which meant you didn't get to see how this happened. Oh, I forgot to unpause! No, when I was putting the trap down! And once again, I reverted back to after beating the desert insect. I only did one key quest, and I was already stuck with not a lot of solutions. The only thing I could really do was upgrade my current armor for more defense, and even then I was still frail. I remembered to save this time and went back to hunt Damio again, but this was an even worse attempt as I got bodied. Due to the frustration of this bad attempt, I just let myself go down. After coming back from a short break, I was refreshed, but I didn't feel good about the only strategy I had, which I kid you not, was don't get hit. I didn't have anything else to fall back on, so I had to be really careful. So I tried again, and this time I fought the crab carefully. And then... Got him! Finally! I look at the armor, and still couldn't craft anything. Well, except the Greaves, which I chose not to make because I invested a lot of armor spheres in my current ones. It was time for me to retry the double Cephadrums, but again, I failed. So much for the don't get hit strategy. At this point, I had to pull out all the stops with my items. This way I could at least have a chance of winning. So I went in, drank the dash juice, threw the sonic bomb, and got the first fish to limp. My plan was to capture both of them, but I didn't realize I had no shock traps, so I had to slay the first Cephadrome. But after that, I had to fight the second one, and it was kinda kicking my butt. After barely surviving, I finally beat this quest and could now make progress. But now I had to see if I got enough hard fangs in rewards, because once a quest was completed, I was not allowed to reset my save to try again. If I was even one short, I would be stuck with my current weapon for a while. Let's see, did I get the amount needed? That's one, two, three, four, 
five. Yes! That is everything I need. <laughs> I now had a G-Rank Charge Blade. The only armor I could make was the Cephalos Arms, but I chose not to make them since they were kinda useless. So yes, I still had to deal with high rank armor for now. When it came to the Ash Ketcha fight, I essentially became a glass cannon, as even though I couldn't take hits well, I dealt a lot of damage. And I even pulled this off. Oh! And with that, Ash Ketcha was down. But once again, I couldn't craft any new gear. Now, Berserk Tetsukabra was the monster I was worried about. It could easily destroy me, and I had to beat it to access the rest of G1's key quests. So after gathering, I began hunting Berserk. Things were going well at first, until I was hit really hard, and then tried to block this attack. Oh! After that, I struggled for the rest of the fight and was soon overpowered. I had to get my best items and try again. I went down in the first couple minutes, but then made a big comeback and did really well. But then a frenzied Tetsukabra showed up, which I will admit, hunting that would have been the smart move, but I didn't want to risk failing the quest again. So I threw a dung bomb at it and finished off Berserk Tetsu. The only armor piece I could craft was the Greaves, which I decided to grab, but would put on later. My next target was Plume Hermitar, but before I began the quest, I was looking up the armor and what it would need so I could plan the hunt accordingly. I also looked at the invader monsters and saw that normal Hermitar was one of them. So my plan was to eat for Game Changer and hunt the normal crap before Plume Damio. But for some reason, I go in the quest and notice that I forgot to eat as well as bring cold drinks. So I had to use my third abandon. In. in hindsight, I shouldn't have done that since there were cold drinks in the supply box. I ate for Game Changer this time and waited for Hermitar to spawn while I was gathering items. But unfortunately, the invader was a Cephadrome, so I went after Plume Damio and began fighting it. But as I was doing so, this happened. Oh no! No! Ugh. Game Changer was supposed to give me regular Hermitar, not the stupid fish. Okay, no, he's leaving, he's leaving, okay. Ah! Stop it, stop it! That was not pleasant to say the least. For the rest of the hunt, I had to stay on my toes because I was still pretty weak and Plume Hermitar was relentless. I eventually fainted because of it, but in the end, I broke every part and beat the purple crab. But sadly, I didn't get that many parts, which left me with only two armor options, the helmet and the greaves. Since I had greaves already, I went for the helmet. And because I got emperor hoppers, I also got the normal hermitar mail. I finally had G-rank armor, but since I was prioritizing defense, I was back down to just one armor skill. With Tiger Stripe as the next key quest, I looked up what monsters can invade it, and to my surprise, I saw this. Oh wait! Plume Damio Hermitar can also appear in this quest. Oh, that's gonna be some big opportunity. This now meant I had another chance to get more of Plume Damio's armor. I ate for Game Changer and gathered while waiting. About eight minutes in, it didn't show up, so I had to hunt Tiger Stripe in the meantime. After only a minute in the fight, a familiar nuisance showed up. Raging! Uh, okay, you know what? Screw it. Well, that stinks. I only had two abandons left, so I really had to be frugal with them. If Plume Hermitar didn't show up this time, that was it. I went in again and began fighting Tiger Stripe while waiting for the invader. But the fight was awful. I was getting bodied left and right. And of course, I failed before I even got to see what the invader was. In my next attempt, I kept struggling and failed right after Ray Jang appeared again. Unfortunately for me, this is where I made a harsh realization. After looking at the Hermitar Z armor, it's clear to me that I'm not gonna be able to craft most of it at all. That and that even if I do beat the frenzied Plume Hermitar, I'm still gonna struggle with Tiger Stripe. And I'm already three abandons down with two left, so I think what I'm gonna have to do is look at the final sets that I'll be making and prepare for that. So that's what I did. I looked at armor pieces and took note of all the parts they would need, so I would prepare as much as possible. And this was it, a mix of Gravios and Tigrex gear that focused on attack, guard, and artillery. Not to mention it would have much better defense than my current set. 
The only real issue was that some of the parts required mantles and large wyvern gems. Let's hope that doesn't become a problem later. I went in the quest and got some required materials being pure crystal. Then I took on tiger stripe and again, I failed. I tried to get pure crystal again, but this time I got nothing. I go for Tiger Stripe once more, and this time I did much better despite being on my toes the whole time. I beat it and got some good rewards, but I couldn't craft any new arms or waist. I still had the high rank versions, so if I didn't get anything to replace them, the lack of high defense would come back to bite me. I decide to try my hand at title Najarala. I go around looking for pure crystal to mine, while also getting Zamite peels which was needed for the future set. Unfortunately though, title was too much for me to handle, so I would try Rathian and Red Kezu instead. But before I started, I grabbed the sap plants from the farm and make dung bombs since I really needed them for this quest. I did fine for the most part against Rathian, but as for Red Kezu, it was infuriating. I was taking too much damage and I failed because it got the jump on me when I was desperate to end it. I retry it and this time I hunt Red Kezu first, which thankfully I beat easily and did the same with Rathian. The only real thing I could craft was Red Kezu's Vambraces. I attempt the title quest again and get the pure crystals and meaty peels before fighting the blue serpent. The struggle was real and I was once again a glass cannon, but soon I had the snake limping and I put the trap in front of it. But it somehow avoided the trap! Look at this! The trap should have stopped it! This now meant I had to finish it off at one feint, but as soon as I engaged it in the next area, this happened. Oh! Ah! Uh, I... Okay... Okay! I may have wasted a trap, but I was glad this hunt was over. I got slog bones in the rewards, which were needed for later, but as for the title armor, none of it could be crafted. But there was something else I could craft, the Rathian Greaves, which I crafted right away, but then immediately regretted doing so. See, this pair of leggings may have more defense than the Berserk ones, but without realizing it, crafting them wasted 3 out of the 5 slog bones I had, meaning I was now one short of the planned armor set. But now it was time for the urgent quest. Seregios. As I was preparing for it, I noticed something game-changing when looking up the invaders. Okay, so I was looking at the urgent quest for this. Because it's unstable, if I eat for Game Changer, go in, and there's a Tigrex, I'm hunting that first. So with the new strat in hand, I ate for Game Changer and took on Seregios while waiting. I kept up with the pinecone just fine, but then I lost my momentum and fainted. When I got back to see what the invader was... What? No! No! Since the monster wasn't Tigrex, I used my fifth abandon, leaving me with one left. I go again, and Seregios was whooping me! It killed me twice before the invader arrived! Okay, if I can't find Tigrex, I have to abandon. I gotta use my li- <sighs> It's a stupid bug! Ah! <laughs> And so, I used my last abandon. But unfortunately in the next attempt, I abandoned when I wasn't supposed to. I don't know why I forgot, but I was so frustrated with RNG screwing me over that I wasn't thinking straight. But rest assured, this doesn't happen again. I tried again and had a really hard time with Seregios, and to make it worse, Celtus showed up again. At this point, I just went after Celtus and beat it down in hopes of getting parts for its faults. But Seregios wasn't having any of it, as it eviscerated me and shattered me to my core. All I could do was look at the Celtus rewards before having to reset my save. Yes, I had another chance to spawn Tigrex, but that was just salt in the wound. So after taking a break, I came back and attempted the fight again. I fainted in the first 5 minutes and came back to a Rathian right before fainting again. Since I couldn't abandon anymore, I had no choice but to keep going. Thankfully, I got my momentum back and beat the pinecone. I may not have gotten Tigrex, but I could finally move on. Of course, the rewards were garbage, and I couldn't make any of the armor. And now this meant the one and only hunt with Tigrex had to count, since it won't be available for future quests even as an invader. The next thing to do was to upgrade my charge blade, and since I had access to Shrouded Nursilla, all I would have to do is break its claws, right? Well, if I hunted four Nursillas in a huntathon and got almost nothing, I wasn't so sure if hunting just one Shrouded would cut it. I also needed Meltspar Ore, which thankfully was in the same quest, so I went in, gathered some Meltspar, and began hunting Shrouded. I had some trouble hitting the claws since I would either miss or hit something else first. I also had a lot of close calls. 
but eventually, I broke the claws and captured the spider. Now was the moment of truth. If I didn't get all four hard claws, my charge blade wouldn't be upgradable for the rest of the run. Please, give me the claws. Come on. Don't be like last time. Okay, that's one, two, three, four. Yes! Yes, yes. I got them all. Yes! Finally, RNG didn't deny me for once. Yes. Uh, oh, <laughs> I can upgrade it. The only problem is I don't have enough money. <laughs> well, it's time to go on a large fishing session again. I was fishing for 20 minutes straight and it was really boring, but I had to do it to afford the upgrade. I think that's a good enough amount of fish. I sell them all and I only have just enough to afford the charge blade. That session of fishing wasn't worth it at all. So I had to resort to selling monster parts, but only ones I knew I wouldn't use. That's a much better amount. And with that, I now had a maxed out G rank weapon with white sharpness and and more defense. Things were starting to look up, but not so fast. There was still Tigrex to worry about. This double hunt quest was my only shot at getting Tigrex armor, so RNG had to be on my side here. So I went in, gathered Flutterflies for the future set, and then started the fight with Tigrex. But in no time flat, it bulldozed right through me, and I failed the quest even faster than all the previous hunts. I had to put off Tigrex for now, so I opted to hunt Gravios instead, since in my mind, it was the easier of the two. Plus, its armor is part of the final set I was aiming for. The quest was going well, since I could hit through most parts with white sharpness, but as soon as I hit blue, I struggled. I would bounce off the legs a lot, and I kept forgetting about the fire gas after the beam attack. And as a result, I fainted twice, but the last faint was something else. No. There wasn't much I could do there since I had little time to react, but I knew I could beat Gravios. I just had to be more careful and strategic, but despite my determination, I still kept making mistake after mistake and failed again. Before I tried again, I prepared bombs to use anytime Gravios did the gas attack. Once prepared, I went back in and fainted. I came back and used the bomb strategy, but then... Ooh, no! No, oh, come on, we're off, we're off. I was pretty frustrated, but I had to get it together. I broke almost everything except the head, but I had to break it as it gives the crown, which I needed two of. I finally break the head and then captured Gravios. But did I get what I needed? Oh no. Well, I got some parts, but nothing I needed at all. Well, it looks like RNG screwed me over on this one. I mean, yeah, I got the required wyvern gem, but it just wasn't enough. Make the arms. Aside from the arms, I'm screwed. With the double hunt quest still being put off, the only other option was Zenogre. I'm not confident at all. You know, during that no sharpen run, my butt was literally handed to me by Zenogre. I don't see how I'm going to do any better with this, but I have to keep going. There he is. Oh my. Oh! 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 Oh my! Oh my gosh! Ooh! Ah, that was a waste! Ooh! Come on! Oh, tail's off! Oh yes! He's limping already! Oh yes! Oh! I was quite surprised with how well I did there, but even with that victory, I still couldn't craft any of Zenogre's gear. But now I couldn't put off the double hunt any longer. I was hoping to carry the same momentum from the Zenogre fight, but Tigrex proved to be a lot nastier here, which resulted in getting one shot three times. Guard one doesn't protect from- the Oh! 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 Mmm, he hits way too hard. It was just as bad in the next attempt, but I eventually managed to capture it. But could the same be said for a Zerathalos? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, you're kidding. No, no, no. Oh. Not having the mantle was the biggest salt in the wound yet. 
If I won this attempt, I could have had the Tessets finally. This really sucked. The only thing I could do at this point was upgrade my Gravios gloves, which thankfully I could max out, but that's still not enough defense. I was once again a glass cannon. I could deal good damage, but I couldn't take hits well at all, and the fact that I was still stuck with the high rank waste didn't help. So now I couldn't rely on defense anymore. I had to play differently if I wanted to beat this quest and possibly this challenge. I got my best items for the job and headed in. I got off to a terrible start because Azurlo startled me, which caused me to faint. I am so glad they got rid of this animation in future games, but regardless, I had to really rely on openings for damage as well as mounts. Once I did that, dealing with Tigrex was much better and I actually beat it. All that was left was Azurlo's, which I used the same strategy for, and it worked even better here. Soon I had him limping and it was time to end it. Okay, get wrecked or get captured, whatever. I am done with this. Woo! As good as this victory was, I was really hoping it was enough for my efforts. Please make up for the last time. What? What? <laughs> three Rathalos rubies? I don't need that many. Getting three rubies like that in the reward box was absolutely insane. But as nice as they were, it's such a shame that the Tigrix Tassets is out of my reach. Yeah, ugh. Oh. Really? I can't craft anything! Oh, I have to fight that. This is not gonna be fun at all. How am I gonna do this? How? How am I gonna do this? With my options getting more and more limited, I had to try and get a new waste. Any waste. Just something better than what I currently had. I went for Diablos first, which was the only monster I was confident enough to beat. It was predictable, and I took advantage with Sonic Bombs, and before I knew it, Diablos was down. However, the rewards were terrible, and I couldn't craft anything. I went after Black Diablos since I had a good start with normal Diablos, but this one was a bit more difficult since she hit harder and had different moves. She goes down just the same, but this time in a way I didn't expect. <laughs> The guard point got the win! <laughs> This was the confidence boost I really needed. But once again, I couldn't craft anything. My next target was Desert Celtus Queen, but it wasn't her that I was after. It was her peasant. When I fought it at the beginning, I didn't get enough parts to craft the waste, but if I beat it again, I could actually replace the high rank Tassets. So I went in and began fighting the peasant. It was a bit hard to focus on it with the queen getting in the way, but I was doing well against it until this happened. Oh. Oh, he's dead! I forgot that she kills them! At first, I didn't think much of it, but this would become a pretty big problem. I continued trying to slay the following peasants, but each and every time, they met their demise before I could slay them. So I had to assume that each one that died still gave rewards, right? Let's see, what did I get? Queen sack, flood sack, pectus. Um, shoot. I honestly don't know if I got the regular Celtus parts. All right, show me. No! <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. Oh man, I really needed this. So you can't get rewards from Desert Celtus if the queen destroys him. Ugh. Needless to say, I couldn't craft the queen's gear either. However, I still had a chance to get a new waist. My current tassets were from Black Gravios, so I looked to see what the G-Rank version required. And to my surprise, it only needed one of each part, which made this a big opportunity. But there was one problem, Black Gravios itself. It has different moves and patterns that could wreck me if I wasn't careful. And to get the one crown, I would have to break the head, which is often hard to reach. I went in expecting to use the same strategy as with normal Gravios. But uh, this is how that went. Ooh, oh, no! Ooh, oh, what? Huh? Oh, oh, no, no. I tried again, but was more careful this time. However, it didn't quite go to plan, as I was still one-shot by the uppercut beam. At this point, I was wishing I had guard up, but didn't have anything for it. 
Or did I? I went to check my box for all the charms I stocked up on from all the mining, and I saw that I had a guard up plus four charm with two slots. I equipped it and went to see if I could craft any shield jewels. I thankfully had enough parts to make four of them, which I did. And once I added them to my set, I noticed my high rank waist already had two points in guard up, which was just enough to get all ten points for the skill. The tassets may have held me down in this challenge, but it was nice to see that they weren't completely useless. I also saw that I I could get defense boost, but the only deco I could make was the defense jewel too. So I crafted mega armor skins, got the deco, and added it to my set. And for the first time, I managed to get four armor skills in a challenge that severely limits you. Now that I had these skills, I upgraded my armor and attempted black gravios again. I was doing a lot better than last time, and guard up combined with guard plus one really helped me here. But then I made some costly mistakes, which led to this happening. Oh my! Mm. Mm. Oh! Oh no 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 no! no. Stop! Ooh. Oh! That was really bad, but I knew I could beat it, so I gave it another shot. That attack! No! Oh! Head's broken now. Oh! Good thing that can block. He's limping. Finally! Yes! I finally beat Black Gravios. Now I just had to get all the parts from rewards. I got the Cortexes. Going, what? I didn't get it. Lame. You cannot be serious right now. That was supposed to be easy to get. 60% chance from breaking the head. <sighs> Once again, RNG screwed me over. With Brute Tigrix next, I doubted whether I could beat it, but I would at least use the same strategy like with Tigrix from before. Once I did that, I did way better than expected. The massive roars had me on my toes, but despite that, I managed to beat it. This fight could have been way worse, but I'm so glad it wasn't. But of course, I couldn't craft the waste, and to make it worse, I didn't have access to true armor spheres, which now meant the high rank waste was at its limit. I had only one key quest before the urgent, a double hunt with Brachidios and Stygian Zenogre. Unfortunately, there wasn't much I could do in the strategy department, and even with the strats I used before, Stygian and Brachy are on another level. So I make the attempt, and within minutes, I was obliterated. I stood no chance against Brachy, and I haven't even fought Stygian yet. This is where I wanted to use poison to my advantage, but I couldn't use the poison hammer I had due to it being a low rank weapon that I couldn't upgrade. In part two of this challenge, I couldn't use poison smoke bombs on Kushala at all, but there was a comment that said you can use them, but only on the head. I was skeptical about this, but I was desperate for strategies, so I decided to go with it. I bring the poison smoke bombs and go after Stygian first. I knew Stygian would be tough, but I had no idea how bad it would be. Oh my! Oh! Oh! Gosh, no! I'm dead. One. No! Come on, I'm at one thing. Don't, Don't do this to me. Oh! Wow. I didn't even get to use the poison bombs. I go again and got him out this time. Once it was down, I tried the poison strat. Is it working? Um, I don't think it's working. Maybe the comment was wrong? Anyway, I kept fighting and did somewhat okay, but I still failed. I was getting really frustrated, so I made buffing items and went after Bracky, but I was overwhelmed again. After that miserable attempt, I honestly thought about quitting. I just couldn't beat this quest no matter what I did. So I had to take the night off before I could decide what to do next. The next day, I chose not to quit and had an idea. I could eat for feline foodie to keep my max health after fainting. So after doing that, I felt pretty good about this attempt. I played carefully and used the Farcaster when things got dicey. I got the supply items and kept up with Bracky until it was limping. I captured it and was now confident I could beat the quest. 
but it seemed Stygian had other ideas. I still took way too much damage, and the Dracophage bugs weren't helping matters. I still dealt a lot of damage, but was down to my last faint. However, I was still confident I would win. But then something terrible happened. I paused the game to go do something real quick, and when I came back... Huh? Did I do something to my controller? No, come on controller, don't do this to me. For some reason, my controller stopped working, and no matter what I did to try and fix it, it wouldn't respond. Why won't it work? No. Well, the only way I'm gonna get my controller working again is if I soft reset. Maybe even restart my computer. Just as I was doing well just as I was doing well. So I had to close the game and restart my PC. When it booted back up, the controller was thankfully working again. I don't know what I did to stop my controller from working, but it was the worst possible time for it to happen. I had the quest in the bag, but one thing was clear. I had to redo that whole fight. So I went in the quest, buffed myself, and was now ready to take it head on. This was the most brutal quest yet, but there was still the urgent and the final few key quests. I still couldn't craft anything new, but I did get some armor spheres, so I upgraded the armor and was able to max out the G-rank gear. But with only 661 defense on my belt, the rest of the fights would still be a challenge. And with the next fight being Chaotic Gore, I had to prepare accordingly. I planned on getting the Chaotic Fault, but knowing how RNG has treated me thus far, I had my doubts. I went in and had a very strong start. I was playing Charge Blade really well and had great momentum, but as expected, Chaotic was not messing around and dealt over half my health and damage with just one hit. In fact, when I tried getting Breathing Room, this happened. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Get out of my face. Uh. Oh, oh. But after making a big comeback, I had it limping in no time, and down it went. After seeing that I didn't even unlock the Chaotic Waste, it was time to take on the Elder Trio. This was my last chance to get a better coil, and out of the three Elders, Kushala's Waste was the more feasible option. If I couldn't get this, I would be stuck with the high-ranked assets for the rest of the run. But seeing how the last Kushala fight went, I wasn't so sure I could beat it this time. In the last part, I barely beat it with the Toxic Stall strat, but now I couldn't even do that because the hammer I used is still a low rank weapon. And even if I did use it, this Kushala has a lot more health this time, and the poison wouldn't keep up with the 35 minute timer. Earlier when I tested the poison smoke bombs, according to the comment, they didn't work at all. But the person only mentioned Kushala. Could this only be a Kushala thing? I brought my poison bombs to find out. When I fought it, I was doing okay at first, but then the black wind appeared which pushed me away. But then it went away upon taking file damage. However, Kushala was hitting very hard, and I had to take precautions. The black aura appeared again, and this time it didn't push me away constantly? Huh. The tornadoes it shot were very close to carting me, which meant I had to retreat in order to heal. Later in the fight when I knocked it down, I put the comments claim to the test again. Um, yeah, I don't think that worked. Well, now we know for sure poison smoke bombs don't work on large monsters here. But I will say, despite the close calls, the black wind didn't affect me all that much, which was strange. And in no time at all... Oh! What? No way I just did that! <laughs> Without poison, <laughs> it's gotta be a G-rank thing, I'm not sure. With that fight done, it was time to see if I had enough parts for the waste. Now here's the real question, is it enough? Mm. Oh! <laughs> well, that was the only chance to replace my task sets, and of course, the desire sensor had to strip any hope of getting this. <sighs> I chose to hunt Camellius next, which honestly didn't have much to mention other than fainting twice and the quest taking too long. So when I finally took it down, I was relieved. 
the last of the Elder Trio was Teostra, which I was confident in beating, but I knew it wouldn't be that easy. At first things were going well, but then Teo fired back with devastating explosions. I did my best to stay alive, but I still failed anyway. To be honest, I wasn't sure if I could beat it after that, but at this point, I had to embrace my inner glass cannon and rely on openings for my damage. It wasn't easy, and I still took a lot of damage, but I overcame the obstacle and finished the job. I still couldn't craft anything new, but I was now two quests away from beating this challenge. The monster standing between me and the final boss was Ukonlos, and the last time I fought it, I made a ton of mistakes, which almost led to failure. But this time, I would not do that again. That didn't make the fight any less difficult though, but because I knew what I was up against, I managed to beat it much easier and much faster than the last one. I checked the smithy one last time to see if I can make the falls, and I wasn't surprised to see I was nowhere close. But now it was time for the final boss of G-Rank, the monster I had to defeat for this challenge to be over. Gogmazios. I was quite nervous for this since I didn't have the set I planned for, my defense wasn't that high, and I didn't have dense markles for the demolisher, but my limited items and improvised armor set would have to do. Before I started, I took time to make as much of what I needed as possible. I made max potions, ancient potions, mega potions, and brought bombs. This was the final item loadout, and this was the final armor set. If I got stuck and couldn't beat Gogmazios, then the challenge would be lost. So I took a deep breath, accepted the quest, and began the final fight. <sighs> okay, here we go. Come on. <sighs> Ooh. Oh! Restraint is ready to use. Good. Okay, I restrained him. Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Okay, no. Farcaster. Oh, I don't have one on me. Oh! Oh my gosh! No. Oh! Wait, is the Dragonator ready? Okay, it is. Yes! I need to fill the cannon. Got him! Come on! Oh! Subquest complete! It's off! And now... Ooh. No! I missed! Ooh. Ooh. Oh! Tail's off! Boom! I forgot about that! Come on! Oh! Oh no! He's entered the second phase. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Come on, get the cannon loaded. Ooh, he's going crazy. Move faster. Cannon, come on. Come on, move. Oh, I don't trust it. Okay. Okay, I have the Dragonator right here. Eat Dragonator. Yes. This should reach, right? Okay. Come on, cannon. Cannon, cannon. On. Fire. Fire. Fire! Oh, yes, I landed all of them. Oh, no, he's flying. No, I can't have him flying right now. Oh, wait. Ugh, yes! How long? Almost 40 minutes? Come on, Dragonator. I need you again. Ugh. Oh! No, 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 no. No, no. No! Um, oh, my gosh! How have I not finished it off already? Oh! No! Come on, dive! No! Ah! With time wasted on the cannon, missing the loose Dragonator, 10 minutes on the clock, and one faint left, I wasn't sure if I could beat Gogmazios. But despite my disadvantages, I had to try. Is the Dragonator ready at all? No, it's not! Come on! I didn't think it would be this close. He's flying. He's flying. Where's the dragon? Oh, there it is. Come on, please. Get it. Oh, come on. How did that? How is the? How is that not the final blow? I'll put these right here. Come on. Come on. Ah. Ah. Not. No. Oh, oh. I'm just using max potion. I don't care at this point. I'm at my last faint anyway. Come on. Oh my gosh. My heart's pounding. Restraint. Come on. Just go down! Come on! Ugh! No! How is that? How is this possible? Five minutes! Come on! Go down! 
There's no way you're alive right now. I only, I've got less than five minutes. <gasps> How? How is he still standing? Yes, come on, lined up perfectly. No, I took too much time at the start. What was I thinking? I don't have time for restraints at this point. I also don't have time to sharpen. Come on, come on, no. Come on, just one little hit. It's just something. You're done. Oh, no. You're done. Ugh. No. Come on, come on. He's done now. He's done now. Come on, there's no way this is happening right now. Yes! Let's go. That is Gogmosius. Dune. Oh my gosh! This is over! <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm lightheaded. I'm carving anyway, even though I'm not using any of this. Despite the frustrations, bad RNG, and the high rank piece of armor, I had beaten 4 Ultimate by doing only key quests and only once. This was one of the hardest challenges I've ever done. But now I'm wondering, what would the results be for doing 100 anomaly investigations? Watch this video to find out.